channel I have been uh, on a month's hiatus as my husband would call it hiatus actually I've been on vacation for about a month I actually flew down to Florida uh, had no time to make any videos because basically I was down in Florida to celebrate the weddings of two of my nieces they both got married the same month one got married in the beginning of the month and one got married at the end of the month so uh, I was down there for that, so uh, I'm back home now, and uh, I'm going to start getting back into making a couple of my videos. I did make a dish down there, uh, which is mashed potato pie, and basically, I grew up on this recipe. My father had made this recipe probably once a month. He would make it all the time. When I go to Italy, my aunts make it, so a lot of people I know make it, so... I'm going to show you what the ingredients are. It's very simple. If you know how to make mashed potatoes, you can make this pie. That's the most, that's the hardest thing. This whole recipe is just not even hard. It's making mashed potatoes. Boil water, put your potatoes in, and then cook your potatoes until your potatoes are done. Make mashed potatoes, and the rest is very, very easy. So step by step, I'm going to show you how to do that. But right now, I'm going to tell you the ingredients that you need. So come with me, and I'll show you what you need. Okay, so these are the ingredients that you're gonna need. Very, very simple. You're gonna need a glass uh, dish or bowl to put your your potatoes in because it's gonna go into the oven. You can use you can use Pyrex or you could use a corningware, whatever, or you can use a, a cake pan, whatever you want to use. This is the dish that I'm gonna be using. I'm starting off with six yellow potatoes. You can use russet. You can use uh, Yukon Gold. Uh, these are yellow potatoes. These are the ones that I always use because I feel they have a lot more, they hold a lot more of their starch and that's what I need. Of course, you need salami. Make sure it's only salami. You can put sausage or you can put meat or you can put ham or you can put prosciutto in there if you want to. But for this recipe calls for just plain sal salami. So uh, I'm making it today with salami. You're gonna need fresh mozzarella, which uh, I'm gonna cut all this up. I'm gonna cut this up. I'm gonna boil my potatoes. You're gonna need some fresh mozzarella. You're gonna need some uh, seasoned breadcrumbs uh, for, for, for the topping. Now, I normally don't use seasoned breadcrumbs. I normally, like I tell you, ready-made seasoned breadcrumbs, I really try to stay away from. Unfortunately, I don't have my homemade Italian uh, breadcrumbs I have none that I made already, so I did have this in the closet. I am going to use this. I also put in two kinds of cheese. I have Pecorino Romano in this jar, and I grated some fresh Parmesan uh, yesterday night, and I have it here. So we're going to get started first by actually peeling the potatoes. Okay, so I have my potatoes here, so I'm going to start by peeling them. I already started. I try to keep like a little bowl... Um, a little bowl or maybe a paper towel or whatever and to make it easier for me to clean so I'm gonna peel one potato for you uh, I know everyone knows how to peel a potato and if you don't have a peeler uh, uh, like I have you can actually use a knife uh, my father used to use the knife a lot of people used to use the knife so that's just one potato so when we come back, I should have the rest of this done. I don't want to show you all of them. Everyone knows how to peel a potato. Very easy. Get a little dish to put the scraps in to make it easier for you to put away. So I'm going to peel the... I'm going to come back, and these should all be done. Okay, so as you can see, my potatoes are peeled, and they're cut into smaller pieces. I'm going to show you uh, what size I made them. So this is the last potato. So I cut them in half first. Wow, this one looks like a pear. And then I cut these in half. And then what I do is I turn them around and I cut these. Also. So you have four, you have eight pieces. I have one just fell on the floor. So you have eight pieces. And that's the size you want to make them. The reason why I cut them this small is because, believe it or not, 
your potatoes will cook very quickly. The smaller you make them, the faster these will cook. You can just cut them in half and throw them in there, but it's gonna take double the uh, time to actually boil your potatoes. So the small, you can even cut these in half and make them even smaller, it's totally up to you, but this I feel is fine. You wanna put them in a pot of cold water. Remember, when you are making mashed potatoes, please put your potatoes in cold water. Do not start it off in hot water because basically what you're doing is you're cooking the outside very quickly and by the time the inside gets cooked, the outside would be very, very smushy. So put it in cold water, then turn up your heat. When it's halfway, just before it's almost done, I add a pinch of milk into the water and that's how I do my potatoes. But of course you can do your potatoes any way you, any way you want. So for now, let's get the potatoes boiling and then we'll go to the next step, cutting up all the uh, other ingredients that have to go inside. Okay, so I have my potatoes boiling. Like I said, start it off with cold water, put your potatoes in. You can make the pieces as small as you want. <clears throat> the smaller the piece, the quicker the potatoes will cook. Uh, like I said, I'm using yellow potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold, you can use Russet. Whichever you make your mashed potatoes, that's what you should use. The next thing we're going to do as the potatoes are actually cooking, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice up my fresh mozzarella and I'm going to show you the size pieces you're going to need for that. Okay, <clears throat> so the next step is I'm going to cut my mozzarella into the pieces that I need. So I have my fresh mozzarella here. I'm going to put at least three pieces on top. This was a round mozzarella. So basically... I'm going to cut pieces like this, and then I'm going to cut them into, basically what I want is, I want little baby cubes like this. Okay, so that's how small you want your pieces. You want them very small. If you happen to make them a little bit bigger, that's fine. And so let's do these two and let's do the last two so this is about a half a pound of mozzarella uh, you can put as much as you want in but this is about enough remember this is only for two people so I'm not making a big uh, potato pie. I'm actually making a decent size one. I showed you the pot before, but so this is your fresh mozzarella. So that's done. The next step we're going to do is we're going to take our, our salami. So let's open this package up. <laughs> almost looks like a pepperoni okay I'm gonna cut it in pieces like this this round okay I'm gonna make a couple of pieces I think two more and I think that's enough so we're gonna put this aside um, I'm gonna get another bowl to put this in so what I like to do is I'll take about three pieces and it's just go down the same thing you did with the mozzarella but these you want to cut a little bit smaller so these are going to be really bite some bite-sized chunks okay they're going to be really really tiny my potatoes are cooking nicely I guys see the water boiling Okay, so when I come back, I should have the rest of this done, and then I'll show you what the next step is. Okay, so my potatoes are done. They have been drained, and this is what they look like. Uh, very, very nice. They cook very quickly. I have a potato masher. Uh, I would recommend using something like this to mash your potatoes. I wouldn't use a ricer if you have a ricer because you're going to make it 
you're gonna make it way too too mushy. You want a little bit of lumpiness. You want your mashed potatoes, this pie, to have a little bit of chunky lumpiness to it. So you're just gonna mash these down like you're making mashed potatoes. And the reason why I use the yellow potatoes is because I like I like the yellow color. You know, I mean, you can use the rest of potatoes. Those are gonna be more white in color. So. These potatoes are not a, not mushy. They're exactly this consistency that I want. Okay, so once I mash, I'm happy with this. Okay. So the next step is, I hate a messy countertop. Okay, so the next step is I have one stick of butter that I cut into small little cubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to now add the butter in. Oh, I'm making my mashed potatoes exactly the way I make my mashed potatoes at home. So that's the way I'm doing it. So I'm going to let this sit for a while. Let the butter incorporate it. Let it melt, as they say. Then I'm going to do is I'm going to do some parsley. Now, if you have fresh parsley, by all means, use the fresh. I don't have fresh. I'm just going to add a little bit. This is going to give it some nice color. Okay, better. About a tablespoon. I can now get my little spoon here. Let's put this on the side for now and just stir this up a little. The butter is melting nicely. I want the butter. To, now, if you like your potatoes buttery, by all means, add more. I think a stick of butter for the amount of potatoes that I have is fine. And remember, we're gonna have other things in here that are gonna give it a lot of flavor. So I'm not looking for really buttered mashed potatoes, but I always put butter in my mashed potatoes. What I'm looking for is the sweet, the saltiness of the salami and also the dry mozzarella. Uh, so I'm gonna add, basically I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt because remember your salami is salted and so is your cheese. Uh, I'm gonna add fine pepper I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna add coarse pepper. I wanna see a little bit of the pepper flakes in here. So I'm gonna add coarse pepper. You can add fine if you don't have coarse pepper at home. Give it another mix. This is the hardest part about making this, is this process right here. Okay, so now for a little bit of flavor as well, uh, well, before I add the breadcrumb, I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. I have about, a two tablespoons of milk. I'm only gonna add half for now because I don't want it to get too mushy. So I want it, I could always add more. I can't take it away. And now it's starting to look really like mashed potatoes. Okay, so I can use the other tablespoon. So we're gonna put two tablespoons of milk in. But remember, do one first. And then if you feel you need more, then by all means, add the other. Okay. So before I add anything else, let's put this aside. Let's get this one more. Put the mansha. A lot of strength, a lot of strength. You know, if you have a ricer at home and you want to use the ricer, then by all means do. I just like to have my mashed potatoes pie a little lumpy. All right, so we're not going to need this no more. So we can get rid of this and we can just give this a quick stir. Okay, now for the fun part. Now for the best of the ingredients. So I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of seasoned breadcrumbs. I'm not gonna put that much in. I'm only gonna put a little, probably about two tablespoons, maybe even less. I'm gonna stir that around. Okay. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add all my mozzarella. Not only is the heat from the potato going to start melting the mozzarella, but when you put it in the oven, it's also gonna, and if you don't have fresh mozzarella, by all means, you can use polio. 
uh, any kind of package, much mozzarella that you find in your local store. Okay, so the next is the salami. And I'm putting it all in. Because I like to taste, oh, I like to taste salami in every bite. Oh, this is already looking at it. And then the best ingredient I saved for last. Scrape from the bottom up. Remember, if you saw any of my cake batter videos, from the bottom up. Okay. So now that's well incorporated. Now, you can use one type of grated cheese or you can use two. Uh, we don't need the, actually, we need the bread from the topping. You can use two or you can use three. Totally up to you. So I have Pecorino Romano, and I also have Parmesan. So I'm gonna start off with the Parmesan, and I'm gonna take one tablespoon, actually one like soup ladle spoonful, and I'm gonna just throw that in there. Okay, then I'm gonna get my Pecorino Romano, and I'm gonna get another keeping, and I'm gonna put that in. There. And because I like Pecorino, I'm gonna get another serving. Okay. Okay, so I think before we use this, it is time to use this. Because this I can get from the bottom. God, the mozzarella is starting to melt already, and I don't even have it in the pan yet. This is the best, you know, if you want to try something different with your mashed potatoes, by all means, I mean, you can. Like, if you're having, if you're having turkey for dinner, you could put sliced up turkey in here. If you're having chicken for dinner, you could put sliced up cooked chicken in here. If you're having sausage and peppers and you don't want to do just plain mashed potatoes on the side, you can make this and put chopped up sausage in there. So, this is just another way of making mashed potatoes, but with some flavor in it. But the only thing is... The Italians improved it. This is what the Italians did. They said, ah, the Americans, plain mashed potatoes. I'll show them. So this is what they came, this is what they came up with. So basically, we're going to put the spoon here. I'm going to give it one taste with the salami. That is absolutely perfect. So now we're going to remove this. Okay, and we're gonna start panning it up. The flour. But what I want to do is I just want to clean off my counter a little. Okay, so now we could. Okay, so this is the pan that I'm using, Pyrex. And if you if you want, you can butter the pan. It's totally up to you. I have the the easy spray. And I like to pan everything because I don't want nothing sticking. So the first thing I do on the bottom is I sprinkle some of the seasoned breadcrumb on the bottom. Why should the top be the only thing that has nice crust? The next thing we do, I hope this is not a small plate, is we're just going to fill. Okay, we're just going to fill it up. Okay, this pie will feed me and James for probably a week. Cause we'll have a little bit tonight for dinner. I'm having, I'm making, I'm making uh, spaghetti with broccoli. And I grew up on that also. Am I gonna do a video on that? I don't know, I may not make one, you know. Well, since it's an easy dish, I may. You know, depends on what time my husband gets home. He's got a shower. Remember, he's going to do a lot of the recording. All right, so we're done with this. I don't need this. Okay. And basically, I'm just going to flatten this out a little. Okay. Now, this mozzarella is going to melt. As this is cooking, 
Okay, and that is potato pie. It's not done yet. I normally like to get a fork and kind of make sort of like a squiggly line. If you're gonna do it for presentation, you wanna do something nice. Okay, the next step is the rest of the breadcrumb that you had lying around, you wanna just sprinkle the top. Okay, that gives it a nice crunchy, crunchiness on the top. And I do like to pour. Oh, I like to get a little bit of grated cheese on top also. Okay, so I'm not done yet. I'm gonna take a little bit of butter, and this is just a, probably a right size, so I'm not using all of it. And what I do is I wanna just shave a little bit of butter, not that much. Every so often, I wanna put some butter on top. Okay. And I make this pie when I'm in Florida and my sister-in-law absolutely, absolutely loves it. And, and the kids love it, you know, so give this a try. I mean, especially if you're tired of plain old mashed potatoes, give this a, tr a try. Maybe we are gonna use all the butter. Let's see, we'll cut this in here. Yeah, we're gonna probably use it all. Okay. I'll just wash my hands a little. Okay, we don't need this no more since there's no more left. The cheese is done. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to cover this. We're going to cover this with a little foil. Okay, we're gonna cover this with a little bit of foil. And now I can stand this up a little. I am the only one videoing today because I am the only one home. So, James is at work. Okay, so this is done. That literally was very easy. The time it took to cook the potatoes, that's the time to put all this together. Like I said, you can put one, if you have, if you like just Pecorino Romano, you can use that. If you like Parmesan, you can use that. I like both, I add both cheeses in. Uh, you, like I said, if you're doing this with sausage and peppers, you could put chunked up, chunked up, chopped up sausage in here. Only thing I wouldn't recommend is, I wouldn't recommend uh, putting the salami or any other meat with salami. If you have salami in here already, that's all you should put in here. The salami gives it a flavor. Uh, the original way this is made is with, with, with salami. Uh, if you want to start putting... Uh, ham or you want to start putting prosciutto or if you want to start putting sausage and stuff like that in there I would leave out the salami because those two uh, ingredients are going to fight with each other the salami is so is 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 a strong tasting ingredient piece of meat on its own so I got my oven preheating to 350 degrees and we're going to cook this for about 45 minutes to an hour and when we come back I'm going to cut into it once it cools a little and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have it in the oven and uh, take it, like I said, uh, preheat your oven to about 350. You're gonna cook it for about 45 minutes to an hour. Just check on it. Uh, if you see it start bubbling, and that means it's, it's, it's done. Want a nice little coating on top to be crispy. So 45 minutes should be enough time. Uh, in the beginning of my video, I turned around and told you that I was on hiatus. I did go to Florida. Uh, I went to Florida to enjoy uh, the summer weather, number one, and uh, number two, to see, of the, to see two of the most beautiful girls I know personally get married. My niece, Nicole, got married first, uh, the beginning of June, which was an absolutely, absolutely beautiful wedding. It was picture perfect, overlooking a lake in uh, historic Claremont. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful uh, Grace Chapel in historic Claremont. Absolutely gorgeous. 
reception was also very, very beautiful. Uh, yeah, so I just want to make a little shout out to my niece, Nicole, and her new husband, Danny. I love you guys a lot, and uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. The second to get married, and that's why I stayed for the month, was my other niece, her sister, Christina. And she married Michael, who is now my nephew as well. And they had their wedding in a Roman Catholic church, which was also absolutely beautiful. Uh, they also had a beautiful reception. The food was fantastic. The guests that they both invited were really, really awesome. I met a lot of new friends out there. Plus I bumped into friends that I made probably the last time I was in Florida. Uh, so it was really, really nice. Uh, I had a great time at both weddings. Uh, I love my niece, Christina, and my new nephew, Michael, just as much as Nicole and Danny. Uh, I am a proud uncle. I have two of the most beautiful uh, nieces that God has ever put on this earth. I do have two other nieces belonging to my brother, Louis, uh, and they are also very, very beautiful. So I just want to do a shout out on my other nieces. So I have a total of four. But the two I'm talking about today are the two that I went to their weddings in the month of June that just passed. And uh, they both look absolutely, absolutely beautiful in their wedding gowns. And uh, I had the best time. So I just wanted to do a little special shout out to my niece, Nicole, and to my niece, Christina, and to Danny and Michael, my two new nephews, take good care of them. So when we come back, I'm going to show you what this potato pie looks like, and uh, I'm going to cut into it, and I'm going to also taste it for you. So tonight, like I said, we're having pasta with broccoli, spaghetti with broccoli, and I'm going to make that uh, the old-fashioned way, like my father did. Uh, so I'm probably going to post a video on that also, so look for that. So when we come back, we'll do the uh, potato pie. Okay, so it's been over 45 minutes. We're going to take it out of the oven. And, uh, wow, it looks amazing. Wow, just look at that. So, this is your potato pie. Uh, get a good shot at that right there, if I could get a closer look at it. But that is your potato pie. It looks absolutely delicious. Uh, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for it to cool down a little before I actually cut into it because uh, I want it to set. So this is what it looks like out of the oven. Very nice, the butter's all melted. The, the uh, breadcrumb and the cheese made a beautiful topping. So we're gonna wait a couple of minutes and then we're gonna cut it into it and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so the potato pie is done. And as you can see, I'm getting ready to make my broccoli and pasta dish but that's going to be another video that's coming up soon but we're concentrating on this right now this is done it's been cooled a little i'm just going to cut a little piece so i can show you what it actually looks like inside and all the goodness okay so that looks so good it is absolutely delicious so there's your mashed potato there's your salami and if you look there's your mozzarella cheese, so I'm going to take a little taste. It's going to be hot, right? It's, yeah, I just took it out of the oven. It's been sitting for like about, it needs to sit a little bit more, but I'm just wanting to take a taste test. Oh my God, that is the gym, you got to try this. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait. Yeah. It'll cool down a little bit. It, no, this is not, it, it looks like it's hot, but it's not. Just blow. Tell me that's not delicious. Uh, that's, I'm going to take another taste, but I got to be careful because I'm making it. Oh, wow. That pipe is, is I love that. That is absolutely delicious. Potato pie. It's a little change from making regular mashed potatoes. Again, it's, uh, I did six potatoes and I did a half a pound of mozzarella and I did the salami. And what did I do? I added fresh parsley. Salt and pepper to taste. Not that much salt because remember you're putting the cheese and you're putting salami in there. I put, parma I put uh, Parmesan cheese and I put pe Pecorino Romano. 
bake it in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes, and this is the result. This is going to be a side dish of our pasta dinner for this evening, and the rest will have leftover during the week. So, like I say at the end of all of my videos, take care of one another. Peace out.